You're now 9 minutes and 17 seconds away from finally making solid, tangible, easy progress on your creative dream. Let's take this slow but steady. Whether it's a book, a blog, a YouTube channel, a painting, an app, a business, or even creating a new standard procedure for work, you have some creative dream and it's time we get started on it. But how come it's so hard to get started? Why does it feel like we keep pushing it off? Maybe instead of solid creative work, you're spending all day replying to emails, checking Instagram, scrolling TikTok, doing other important tasks so you get to the end of a week or year and realize nothing's changed. Well, good news for us, you're not only 8 minutes and 43 seconds away from starting. There's four phases you're going to cycle through every time you sit down to do something creative, and this video will walk you through that entire cycle. I don't care how many times you've been told that you're not creative, or that your ideas are worthless, or that you are worthless. You know the potential you have to create something beautiful. If you're new to the channel, welcome, because you're home, and to be honest, we need you. I got lucky and connected with my new friend, hey, Rick. He's a crazy God, talented music producer, videographer, and perfect example of how anyone has potential for creative genius. We collabed on this video for months, so you can watch and re-watch this video anytime you sit down to create something. And whatever it is you're about to sit down and create, it might change you or someone else's life. The first phase of creative flow is to bridle distraction. It's not just a select few people that struggle with this, it's something that everyone struggles with. Distraction's always going to find you and it's going to keep finding you. You're not a bad person because of that. Real creative results come not from sporadic spikes in attention, but from smooth and steady rhythm. This might sound radical, and I know the comments are gonna blow up in anger at me, but to bridle the massive distractions in my life, I have my devices in do not disturb mode for like 80% of my day. Do not disturb mode should be our default status. And I'll admit, sometimes I get a little bit of heat from people because it's like, you're taking so long to respond to my messages. Well, it's funny because while that person's complaining, who's the one actually getting real work done? Who's the one actually making changes in their life? I have fewer distractions than ever, and I'm probably the happiest I've ever been. Put distraction in a different room out of sight. All it takes is that one or two seconds of checking something to take you away from your main task. So for me, I totally get rid of the distraction. So I put my phone in another room. Mentally, I think it's more of like an abstract thought in my mind and it works for me, but it's kind of like there's another wall in front of my phone. So that means like it's no like, it's game time, you know? A 10 minute a day limit for TikTok, Instagram, Facebook is more than enough. When you wake up and you spend two to three hours watching TikTok, you know your confidence has fallen for the day. And you start to blame yourself, you start to get upset with yourself, and like, oh, why did I waste all that time? You're not a bad person for it. You're a human being. The motivation to be distracted comes faster than doing creative work, but it's far less fulfilling. When I make something musical or when I make a video, if I do something that I found hard, the dopamine hit that I get from that is on a different level compared to what Instagram or Facebook, whatever. And that's how the great become greater because and they learn how to manage their distractions on a daily basis. Whereas someone who's giving into their distractions are never gonna get at that same level. Don't be surprised when you've set aside four hours to do some awesome creative work and you sit down getting ready and nothing comes. Then you get frustrated until you realize this sucks and let's just go back to distractions. Transitioning to creative flow is not instantaneous. I'm a big runner nowadays and if I'm going for a two hour run, the first 20 minutes my mind anticipates a grueling experience ahead and tries to make excuses to find something easier. So rather than beating myself up, I tell myself that the first 20 minutes of this run they don't matter. My pace won't be impressive and it's very slow, but almost every time, eventually my thinking brain starts to realize that it's in the run, then my body wakes up and I start to cruise. I can do this run for hours and hours and I don't ever wanna stop. But that feeling never comes until after that initial transition where I gotta just kinda push through that first 20 minutes. When I sit down to do creative work, I'm just here to start and to transition and to warm up and I'm patient. While warming up, there's no need to be perfect. Just relax and play with it. You'll find me if when I'm in my like studio at, in the middle of the night, my lamp will be on and I'll just be saying to my head, just play with it. Just have fun, be a kid again, you know? A lot of people watching this, they're gonna resonate and they're gonna be like, oh, perfection's my weakness. And especially when you love what you do, it's so hard to differentiate between, I wanna make it perfect for everyone, but 
it's getting nowhere, you know? I'm not having fun with it. One out of every 10, 15 beats will be like, someone's really just speaking it into my ear. They're singing me the melody. But 95, 99% of the time, it's through play. It's through having no expectation of like the idea of perfection. Okay, so what happens if you're trying to warm up, but you literally have no idea where to start in the first place? The answer is obvious. Steal an idea. What can I take from two, two things I love? That's that middle ground where you're still like an artist and you never run out of ideas because everyone around you is using a form of creation that you can kind of take a little bit off everything, you know? By this point, you're starting to get past that initial struggle of the transition into flow. As time passes, that mental resistance starts to melt away and just past this warm up. This is where the fun begins. This is when the creative ideas are gonna start to flow. You won't wanna leave this flow state. Creative flow is this beautiful state where there's no space, there's no time, there's not much of the analytical mind at all. And this effortless flow can last for hours so long as you just keep moving. Every project I create and even this video I'm making right now feels muddy at the start. I constantly run into problems and worry this might be a garbage product in the end, but I just keep moving on it, one foot in front of the other. Because things will go wrong every single time you try to create something new. If you're stuck Stumped writing a section of your book? Move on to the next chapter. If a new feature you're coding isn't working, work on a different one. Just start by sketching what you can. It's not gonna feel like a masterpiece at first. But the most important element to this flow state and cycle is to feel gratitude for every step in the process. If you're a YouTuber, yeah, the subs will eventually come. If you're a business owner, yes, you will eventually make X amount of dollars and reach your financial goals. As awesome as those end goals are going to be, it's okay to feel happy and fulfilled right now before you've reached those end goals. I'm running a 100 mile marathon in December. Everyone always asks about race day and what the finish line will be like, but you know what? This has totally changed for me. This is not how I've been in the past, but finally, I'm not thinking about the end result that much. Yeah, that day will be cool when I actually accomplish the 100 mile marathon, but I'm just focused and grateful for the one small run that I get to do today. The race is in December, but now is when I'm changing. Now is when I'm improving. That gratitude makes me feel like I can do this running flow and this creative flow forever because I'm just grateful for right now. But back to creative work, even though you won't want to stop your creative flow sessions when three, four, five hours goes by, you need to stop and you need to recover. In the book Effortless by Greg McCown, he tells the story of two expeditions that tried to make it to the South Pole in the early 1900s. One group said push to exhaustion every day and unfortunately not only did that expedition take longer to get to the South Pole, but all five of them died on the return journey. Whereas another expedition said 15 miles a day. Even when they felt like they could do more that day, they just stuck with that rhythm of 15 miles a day. That expedition made it to the South Pole five weeks earlier than the first, and not a single person died on that journey. Consistency day in and day out helped that team achieve the goal without particular effort. Never exceed the upper bound. Set a time limit for the day, and when you're done, you're done. Go talk with family members, go play outside with friends, sit down by the water and write about your day. You need to take seriously your recovery just as much as your high performance because you'll be right back on the starting line tomorrow. So maybe in this creative session you're about to start, maybe you won't make drastic accomplishments and knock out like an entire project in one single day. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But if you can make just 1% progress today, that's all it takes. Because if you consistently show up and if you improve just 1% daily for 365 days, Days, you'll end up 37 times better than when you started. Well, there's about 25 seconds until this video ends and your creative work session begins. Start by bridling distraction, then intentionally warm up before you relax into flow. And as great as your session is about to be, set an upper bound and then recover. Because if you work and recover daily, and if you fall in love with the process and just learn to feel gratitude, even when you don't have a reason to feel grateful, then you and I will catch up in about three months from now and we'll see how your life is changed. <clears throat> and uh, of course, after you hit like and subscribe at the bottom, let's get started with your creative work. In three, two, one, let's begin.